Thank you everyone for joining the August monthly meeting of Fusion. Um, I'm joining from Sydney, which is on Gadigal land of the Eora Nation, and I pay my respects to Gadigal elders past and present. Uh, in Indigenous Affairs in the last month, we've had our Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, uh, discuss what might be the wording of a referendum for um, an Indigenous voice to Parliament. And the Fusion Party supports the Uluru Statement from the Heart for um, a voice to Parliament, truth-telling and treaty, but I'm not sure of the wisdom of a uh, a very vague and simple question, um, whatever it's going to be, it's going to have to have support from the two biggest parties in order to succeed. We don't have referendums, referenda very often in Australia, and when we do, they don't often succeed. Um, all right, so this uh, August meeting, uh, we'll just have a few updates, including, um, of course, the Victorian election, which is uh, getting close now, as well as a few uh, general party matters and um, sorry I should introduce myself uh, I'm Andrea and uh, I'm the comms officer for Fusion and um, Roger is our president and secretary and he's organized the membership numbers for the last month uh, so we have 1841 members at present and we've had 55 new members this month and that's part of our uh, recruitment drive to increase our Victorian membership numbers as we uh, making sure we had enough members to get registered in Victoria, for which we need 500 members who are Victorian voters. So this, um, this represents the membership drive that we did to get new members, but also to get some lapsed members back on board. The pie graph here is uh, showing members that have come from the various uh, branches, the, uh, the former parties, um, and we've got this ever-growing fusion wedge at the moment, which is um, members who have signed up to fusion um, outside of any of the branch structure, which is cool to see. And just a breakdown of the 55 new members in July. Um, huge effort here uh, to get 32 members from the science branch who had lapsed. Um, some members who had signed up any time since uh, 2013. And I want to acknowledge Saha's work in um, making um, most of the phone calls to 100 lapsed science members um, and getting um, a lot of them um, signed up and on board with Fusion. So when the, when the previous parties merged, science did not just port everyone over automatically. We made sure we had that informed consent from people. And that uh, led to us having 616 Victorian members to submit to the Victorian Electoral Commission. Uh, so that's a um, pretty safe buffer given that we need 500 to register and that process is ongoing. Yeah, and I'll just um, maybe just have a, a look back there to see that in the lead up to elections, that's when we get our signups. There's no greater um, campaign that we can run than being part of an election. Um, all right, so our Treasurer Michael Moroski will um, just give us a quick update on the finances. Yep, so uh, very quick at this time, um, considering it's been a relatively uh, sort of inactive month. Just quickly in the profit loss, um, we've received about $400 in donations, which is uh, a good sort of steady amount for sort of a, for a quiet month. Um, as we are getting into the Victorian elections, we'll be looking at um, once we get sort of our candidates going and stuff like that, we'll be uh, pushing for them to start fundraising and, and uh, bringing in some funds that they can use for, for these campaigns. Um, but yeah, in this uh, relatively quiet month of August, we've had this, uh, we had about $400 in donations. Um, now, uh, some with our operating expenses, we have $426.40 total. Um, so uh, most of that is our regular uh, sort of expenses. Um, that consulting accounting is just zero, uh, what generates these reports, does our financing, and then uh, our Google account. Uh, and then there's a little bit more extra in there, which is some funds spent on uh, ClickSend, which is the feature, which is the uh, 
a service we use to shoot out emails to a bunch of members. Um, and then transaction fees, just the, uh, the costs from Stripe that we get, that we have to, uh, that we get charged for spending that money. So um, to click on the balance sheet, uh, the bank account itself has $13,986.30. Um, and um, there is a current liability sitting there of, of uh, $5,312. So that's just a number of, um, that's just a few outstanding bills and things like that. Some of that is uh, those click send um, payments that haven't yet been reimbursed. There are still some funds that uh, may go to, uh, that, that, that need to be reimbursed to candidates. Um, but uh, there's actually a number of that in that liabilities that will likely not actually uh, need to be reimbursed as a number of candidates have uh, declared, like sort of stated that they're happy for those donations to stay with the party. Uh, so uh, net assets there of sort of 8,600 there, but um, that that number might actually be a little higher in terms of what we have. So it's a bit of money that we'll ideally be able to put into the Victorian um, campaign. Um, now, uh, and that's so that's pretty much it for the month. Um, there's not much in the way of sort of large expenditure day-to-day -day admin stuff coming up. So hopefully we can at least keep this going, but ideally sort of picking it up with the with the donations, building up that war chest for for um, for the campaigns. The other thing is just that um, uh, candidate returns and party returns for the federal election are due on Monday. Uh, any candidates who uh, gave a uh, assigned a party agent, those party agents will need to get those sorted. Anyone who didn't, the candidates themselves will need to will need to do that. Um, if there are any candidates who didn't appoint me as a as a party agent but would like some help, I'm available for that, and that does mean for everyone else. Uh, hopefully soon we'll be able to get some information about uh, how much various candidates spent. Uh, it's always quite interesting to see uh, some of those some of those numbers, especially when you have uh, things like uh, probably UAP is probably the one I'm most interested in. See if they are uh, see, see see how much they spent per the very few votes they got. Uh, but yeah, that's all for me. Unless there's any other questions. Thanks, Michael. Yeah, any questions? It is good to have. Um a little bit of a war chest going into an election. And then after the Victorian election on November 26th this year, the next thing that we'll be looking at is the New South Wales Council elections uh, this time next year. There is a New South Wales state election earlier next year, but you have to be registered a year in advance. And we were deep in federal election planning at that time. And I'm not sure we'd... Uh, be able to get those 750 New South Wales members needed for New South Wales state registration. Um, in the comments, yes, um, 1,500 is the, the minimum membership for federal registration. Um, all right, let's uh, move on to Victorian election and registration progress. In terms of registration, um, we need 500 members in Victoria to um, receive a letter from the Victorian Electoral Commission and to send that letter back to sign it, say, yes, I'm a member, and to send that, um, that letter back to the Electoral Commission. And here's where we are so far. So we had 616 uh, members who we submitted the details of to the Victorian Electoral Commission. So we first uh, sent out an email reminder to everyone um, about that. Um, and some of those emails, of course, bounced. And we sent an SMS reminder to those members as well. Um, there were 64 members who we weren't able to send an SMS reminder to, so they'll need a phone call to follow up. Um, of the those who have had an SMS reminder, we've got no reply from 227, but it is nice we've got uh, 209 replied to the SMS to say, yes, I have returned my form. So we're... 40% of the way to our target of 500 forms. And um, so it's going to be some intensive work in the next couple of weeks to get that done. 56 members have received the form, but not returned it yet. 16 members were unsure if they'd received the form. Some of those are away from home. The rest, I'd suggest check your mailbox. 41 members have not received the form, and we know this is uh, the case in some regional areas. So our registered officer, Cami, will check in with um, the Electoral Commission as to what we do there. Three members actually quit uh, throughout this process, unfortunately. Um, and yes, further follow-up 
needed um, to get those remaining 300. Uh, so if we've got any members from Victoria here, um, please ask if you have any questions about this process. Not a question, but I might um, just add a little comment as well, because I see Luke's added in the uh, in the chat that he knows maybe five more people that he convinced to join, even though we have submitted all of the members that we had available at the time. Um, we do get a second chance if we don't hit the 500. So we will be notified by VEC, uh, Victorian Electoral uh, Commission. If we don't hit the 500, we'll be given another opportunity to submit some additional uh, details. So if you do know more people in Victoria who um, align with our values and, and they might like to sign up, then by all means, have that chat, get them to sign up and we can keep them in reserve just in case. But hopefully um, hopefully the ones that we've sent out to already will, will come through for us. Mm. So we've got this um, this large chunk here of no reply. Um, hopefully, many of those people have in fact returned their forms. They just didn't reply to the SMS. Andrew, I'm not sure if I um, if I received my one. Mm. Um, would you be able to resend it, maybe? Yeah, it's difficult because the um, electoral commission sends those out, and they won't give us much information about individual members. Um, but we can, if you want to send an email um, or a message um, straight after this, we can check if we've got your correct um, address in yeah. your database in case uh, you've moved. I had a change of address about five months ago, so mm. that's why I haven't received it yet. Mm. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. Um, we've got, yeah, we've got a few specific questions that we will try to ask the Electoral Commission I think you can also, I'm not sure if they would trace you specifically, but if you have a change of address, uh, contact VEC directly and make sure that it's up to date there as well and let them know. Because um, they they said to to forward, you know, um, people who have questions around the process um, to them as well. So you might be able to um, update them, give the details that you're a member of Fusion Mm-hmm. Yep. So we'll get a an update um, and find out how many of the uh, these no replies have in fact returned their form and see how many how many of the stops we need to pull out. Uh, another thing I found out just when when I was going through the responses, just a quirk uh, of the six hundred and sixteen Victorian members, twelve of them are called Kath, Kathy, Catherine. Or a variation upon there. So just thought I'd mention that the Cath Caucus is strong. All right. Um, I was hoping Miles would be here as the campaigns convener to discuss the uh, progress on the Victorian election in terms of candidates, policy, and volunteers. We've got several candidate expressions of interest, and these are progressing to formal um, endorsement processes. So we hope to be announcing them very soon and getting them uh, visible. And the policy platform as well, you know, we've got our federal policy platform, but that needs, um, we need to work up some areas related to um, state level politics. And there is a, a meeting after this um, that's going into um, our priorities for the policy platform. And over the next couple of weeks, we'll finalize that. So if you're interested, please hang around. When it comes to volunteers, um, we are recruiting as many volunteers as we can to make phone calls to all the all the Victorian members um, and supporters because we have supporters, volunteers that sign up who are not members. And um, we found that getting uh, boots on the ground, uh, people actually out there at the voting place really um, boosts our vote. I'm afraid I don't have much more detail there. I'll ask if there's any questions. We do have some of the broad strokes of the, the policy areas um, to be discussed. So there's uh, native forest clearing is one that's coming up a lot. Um, the, the energy grid, uh, of course, there's controversy about um, renewable energy generation being set up and then the transmission lines are having to go through um, a lot of farmland. That's a controversial topic. 
um, the there's anti-protest laws that have come in and they seem directed at um, environmental protests and the there's the state government's handling of the COVID crisis as well. Um, yes, Simon? Um, I just want to point out that I'm, I'm in the um, state meetings as well and I think we're also open to more uh, people who would be interested in being a candidate because we want to sort of, it doesn't even cost that much to run and we just want to get our name out there quite a lot. So if there's anyone in this meeting who's interested in being a candidate, um, please come forward. Hmm. Yeah, please have a chat to any of the organisers here or any that you know um, outside of this meeting. It's $350 to run as opposed to the $2,000 per candidate for federal. So we can um, get ourselves out there if we have um, people with uh, political passions and something to say. One of the interesting things that's come up in Victorian politics just in the last week was that uh, Dan Andrews has announced uh, that the state of Victoria will cover hex fees for nursing and midwifery. It was already discounted and I would suggest that the nursing and midwife shortage has a lot to do with the conditions once they start working, the understaffing. Um, it's always nice to be paid more, but it's also very nice to be able to take the leave that is in your contract and uh, not be working unpaid overtime. The unions aren't very happy because they're worried that it will result in shortages in other states and territories. They mm. think it needs to be a national policy to encourage more nurses because it's, it's not its not just people who study in Victoria. It's anyone that studies in Australia that then goes and works in Victoria for two years will have their hex paid. Uh-huh. I mean, it's similar in a lot of areas, I think, with teachers, uh, doctors, nurses, there's this high level of attrition and it seems uh, it seems the first thing we try to do is retain people in these professions rather than um, trying to train up more of them knowing that a certain percentage quit because of the um, the conditions and the lack of support ah interesting comment maybe we should adopt abolish the states as party policy I've always thought that that two levels of government seems like the natural choice a federal and I suppose regional um i can't help feeling it's about 125 years late but it's a very interesting idea there is some double handling obviously in well health and education health especially became very prominent as uh, we entered the covid pandemic um we saw where there was crossover between state and federal who's responsible for the ruby princess i still don't know we would have to reform the federal level to make it more accountable because at the moment states are a good check on a really trash federal government. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, here we are at 7.30. Uh, we've got an hour allocated for this meeting. And so just before we get into maybe some more informal discussion, I'll just go through a, a few upcoming events that we have. So we've got um, our mates in Basic Income Australia who discuss the various implementations that we could have of a universal basic income to make sure that all Australians have their basic needs um, looked after and they are meeting online. They've got an action group coming up on Saturday week, 10th of September, and they alternate that with a trivia uh, meet and greet. And the next one of those is a little later on Thursday, 6th of October. Uh, and you can find them on meetup.com if you look for Basic Income Australia. And the second thing is the Move Beyond Coal launch party. It's um, taking lessons from the Stop Adani movement. So if uh, that's your thing, there are some launches coming up. Saturday 17th in Sydney, Wednesday 21st in Brisbane, Thursday 22nd September in Coffs Harbour. And on the same night, there's an online event. And Wednesday 28th of September in Melbourne. And Saha's just put there, she's going to both. Um, um, did you hear about that through Canada Bay by any chance? Um, yes, I did move beyond coal. I'm not sure where I heard of basic income, but I am down for that. Yeah, they had us on their um, their monthly chat, which they uh, format as a podcast just before the election and upcoming events on the fusion side of things. 
uh, meetings are held on the last Wednesday of each month. You know that because you're here and this is one of them. And the next one is on the 28th of September. And we're going to start up um, fortnightly chats on Discord on the first and third Wednesday of the month. So the first one is coming up uh, this time next week. So that's uh, going to be a place to gather ideas and discuss the politics of the last couple of weeks. Uh, yes, yeah, so that's what we're planning with um, the Discord chats. I think now that the uh, election has settled, the dust has settled, you know, there's time to go back into a rhythm to um, regularly speak, you know, for people who aren't following all of the text that's going on in Discord, because it can be a lot. But yeah, I think it's time for maybe some deeper chats to refine some of the policy points or the things that are coming up as well. I'll just put a link in here to our Discord server. Um, so that's an online discussion space where we've got a lot of text discussion and we can have voice chats in there as well. So that's, yeah, first and third Wednesday. So what's, what does that make it? Seventh? Wednesday, seventh September mm -hmm. is the first one. And that's at the same time, isn't it? Seven o'clock? Seven o'clock on the seventh. And I guess I'm just curious, do people feel comfortable sharing uh, what brought them to the fusion party or what is important to them? I've got a, I've got a funny story if, um, if you want to hear it. Um, yeah, sure. So I, um, I came out of a fundamental religious um, cult um, known as the Jehovah Witnesses. Um, I was brought up as a Jehovah's Witness um, and I was in for 36 years. It was when my little boy needed a blood transfusion and I gave him one to save his life that I got kicked out. Um, I discovered uh, logical thinking <laughs> um, fairly soon after I had left and I stumbled across the secular party and um, they were giving away free memberships at the time, so I joined up. And um, yeah, I haven't I haven't been a religious person now for ten years. So yeah, I'm, that's why I'm here now. And I thought uh, if Scott Morrison wins the next federal election, I'm definitely going to try and do more within this party to try and um, help people see a little more reason than um, than what is actually out there, because it blows my mind just how ridiculous some people's thinking is especially today and I think social media has a huge effect on the way people think um having coming from a, a a background of brainwashing um I can see it happening to other people really easily and so I think it's really important that we try and just, you know help people understand that a lot of the stuff that they see online is not actually real um and I think this is the party that I would like to try and back and support as much as I can even though Scott uh, didn't win the election, which is a great news. Um, <laughs> yeah, thank gosh. <laughs> uh, it's interesting because um, some people think secularism is anti-religion, so it's good people can appreciate what it actually means. Mm. Um, it's somewhat of a tangent, but I did mean to mention when I was talking about the, the referendum question that there is a piece of... Um, disinformation to dispel which is now I hate to repeat it because the more times we hear something the more true it sounds but um, you need to know what I'm talking about and that's this um, idea that uh, a voice to parliament would be a third chamber it is not that started out as a lie and now it's being repeated by people who believe it um, so there is a, a debate to be had about the form of a um, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander voice to Parliament, but that debate has to be built on clear understandings and the truth. Yeah, it's funny as you are uh, just move through the world, start to notice some things don't improve or evolve or change, and so there can be some ideas that are held on to that pass the test of time. I think it's really important that we do help people become aware of. Um, logical fallacies and cognitive biases and that's definitely one step towards making sure our democracy is better informed. And politics is so tribal uh, you know people will be against an idea or say that they're against idea because it's an idea from the other side of politics with uh, in some cases very little thought. 
I was going to add that uh, the reason why I mentioned the fallacies thing is it's something I'm familiarizing myself with it recently. You know, there's websites where there's a list of all the logical fallacies and cognitive biases and things like that. And it's really interesting to read. And um, we've been toying around with this idea of having a podcast. So I'm thinking to start off, it would be really good just to have bite-sized explainers of what these are and have examples that have happened in OSPOL recently and I think that's a start so I think if anyone's interested in that idea and can help out um, just uh, email contact at fusionparty.org.au. Cool um, all right let's stop the recording um, and uh, thanks everyone who's watching this later. <laughs>